This game is rated M for Mature. Hello everybody, Ohio goes on us. It's Vampire Cthulhu here, and welcome back to more Let's Play Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. In the last episode, we covered the tutorial of the game featuring one of my favorite characters from the game, Jack, who taught us the ins and outs of being a vampire, pretty much. And now we're in our little, uh, as they call it in World of Darkness terms, haven here, our little apartment, and we're getting ready to basically start on the main game. Now, I apologize for the kind of ridiculously long hiatus that we had since the last episode, but uh, the main reason... Well, not the main reason, but the first reason was that my cousin was actually getting married. And for all you non-Pakistani people out there, uh, Paki weddings are a big ordeal. Like, a huge ordeal. Like, I wasn't even in my room because I had my aunt staying in my room. So I couldn't record even if I wanted to. Then immediately after that, I got very, very ill. Like, I had a really, really bad throat infection for about two weeks. I'm still kind of getting over it, but I mean, I can talk. I can record stuff. So, yeah, I'm just ready to jump in. And, like, any... Just like anybody should do uh, their first thing waking up in the day, or I guess in this case, night. Uh, well, I guess check your desk for notes. Hey, the password for your computer is Sunrise. Keep the cash in the drawers. It's yours. I dropped you an email with my ad with my address. Come on over after you get settled from Mercurio. So that's that agent that uh, Le Kratos were supposed to be meeting. And we have this other note here. At your convenience, please come and visit in my home downtown. I leave you this to guide you. Dark blood, our curse, light this verse. Such power I sense in one so young. Confine me where burns the mystical sun. M. Strauss, Tremere Regent. Well, I'm sure we'll have to go meet him sometime. So here's a cash in the drawer that Mercurio told us about. And now we can check our email. A reminder from Lacroix telling us about, hey, Mercurio's gonna meet you. Oh, that that's an interesting e email. Uh, that I mean, that's definitely accurate to real life, so... Kilpatrick's crime pewter. Looking for that lazy ass ex husband who's laid on his alimony payments? How about that jerk who knocked you up? Look no further. With Arthur Kilpatrick's amazing crime pewter, you can find almost anyone with a record. Alright, that could be useful later in our life. Welcome from Mercurio. Hey, welcome to town. Come on over to my place once you get situated, and we'll talk about what you'll need to get the job done. I'm going to pick up some explosives right now. Alright, some astrolite. I should be back by the time you come over. I'm at 24 Main Street and number 4. Walk to the end of the alley, and my building is the next one on the right. And the opening from a friend. The game begins. A pawn is moved. Kind of a creepy email. But, uh, well, that's everything on a computer. Now, there's not that much to do in a haven to start with. First thing we're going to want to do is uh, we can go here to our bathroom and find this pill bottle. It's a bottle of estrogen. Caution, do not take if male. Well, that's an interesting thing to put. And also, we have this watch sitting here near the toilet. Uh, sure. And if you go to your fridge, you can find three blood packs. These will be useful if you want to refill on blood, but you don't have anybody to basically drink from. Uh, these will be blue blood packs if you're Ventrue, by the way. So immediately, uh, because uh, pro tip, this is not my first recording, this is actually my third, uh, we're going to want to lockpick into this, bil uh, this building, this room right next to ours. But we can see it's difficulty five, so if we blood buff first, we'll have the... I believe lockpicking is dexterity, check. We'll have the dexterity to get inside. Now there's not much here 
inside here for us, but there is one little thing. If we look inside of here, we can see Peepin, a warrior field guide. Peepin's not just for lonely, perverted losers anymore. In fact, at least three psychologists say it's a healthy form of sexual expression. Every good warrior needs to develop a sneaking game. So this is a skill book. If you played any of the Elder Scrolls games, which apparently I can't just stop comparing this game to any of the Elder Scrolls games, you'll know how these work. You read them, they raise your skill. Luckily in this game, they disappear from your inventory whenever you do that. They don't just clog up your inventory like in the Elder Scrolls. So let's continue down our apartment and see Mercurio, but first we can see there's a newspaper here. Let's see what's on it. Carnival of Death. Gruesome remains found on the pier. Police baffled. That looks like a real... <laughs> that's a real money shot right there. So uh, I guess we'll have to check that out at some point. But now, for now, let's just leave our apartment and go see Mercurio. You got, you got some change, mister? And just like the first thing that always happened in the city, we always get stopped by a bum. Hmm, you hungry? I am too. Hmm, we do seem to be all alone in this alley. My blood pool is kind of low. This is a free, free bum that you can feed off of. Not much blood, but hey, it's something. Thanks, dude. And now we can proceed to go see Mercurio. Yeah, that looks like a guy, but he's not looking too hot. We better, we better go and check on him, make sure he's all right, and see what, see what's up. Nice thing we got a nice trail leading straight to him. Uh, hey, dude, you, you dead? Those mothers ripped me off. I'm dying here. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, so you're Mercurio? Uh, yeah. You looking for the astrolite? I'm. Oh, I can feel a draft on my fucking insides. They shank me, the bastards. The blood ain't working no more. My head, it feels cracked. Oh, I think my eyes popped. All right, d tell me what happened. I got. I went. Uh, what is this lump? Is this my rib? Oh, holy shit! My rib is poking through my side. Oh, I'm all numb. You gotta look and tell me. Dude, just, like, tell me. I don't have time for this. All right, all right. Jeez. You think you were the one laying here with his guts hanging out? It was that freaking chemist. Guy mixes up speed, his crew sells it. Occasionally he does explosives. I set up a drop. I show up at the beach with the money, right? Four of these guys, they come out of nowhere. Junky pricks hit me with a bat. <coughs> it feels like I got a friggin' horse kick in it. Those cocksuckers beat me rotten, left me for a stiff. I had to crawl to my car. Call my ass up here. The vamp blood's the only thing holding me together. But shit, they got the money, they got the astrolite. Wait, vamp blood? You don't look like a vampire, dude. Right, you're straight off the bus. Once a month I get fed vampire blood. Heals me faster, makes me stronger than a normal human. I don't age. By looking at me, you wouldn't realize it, but I'm almost 60. So, where do I find the astrolite now? A small time sons of bitches live out in a dump on the beach. Four or five of them. The one's got the explosives is Dennis. Got my money too, that prick. How do I get there? Land in a pool in my own blood and you want friggin' directions. Right, all right. Uh, down the street, in the parking garage, stairs down to the beach. On the right. <clears throat> Those better not be some of my last words. Anything else? You gotta... You gotta get it back from him. Maybe reason with him, maybe break in. I don't know. I wanna kill him. Do whatever you people do. I blew it, I know. Alright, uh, I'll go get the astrolite, but is there anything I can do to help you? You don't look alright. Yeah, if you could... Oh, something just started leaking. I need something for the pain. Alright, I can get something. Uh, one more thing. About the deal. I mean it. You tell anyone about this, I'm dead. I'm begging you. I got a way of getting people what they need. If you don't say anything, I can help you out. You seem like a nice guy. Alright, bye. So, we are sent here basically on our first major quest. Uh, if we look, we can actually see we already completed one for our third Mercurio, which is locating Mercurio. Not really that hard. But now we have Surf's Up and the Pain of Being Mercurio available to us. So, the first one that we're gonna go take care of is the Pain of Being Mercurio.
conveniently, there's a medical clinic right in front of our apartments. So, uh, why don't we go and see if we can find anything for our good buddy Mercurio. Oh man, you! You're a vampire, aren't you? Uh, dude, uh, what are you smoking? Uh, I remember that masquerade thing that Jack told me about. Oh, come on! Oh man, you are too! Don't bullshit me, man! <laughs> Just come clean, you know? I mean, oh man! I ain't gonna tell no one. It's okay, man. I just wanna talk. Alright then, let's talk. Hell yeah! Oh man! I knew it! I just... Oh jeez, I knew you were... I just could tell! I... Oh man, this is great! And I saw your teeth and, and I was like, damn, it was like I could just sense you. The name's Knox Harrington. Pleasure to meet you. Oh man! Uh, are you a vampire? I mean, you don't really look the part, but how do you know all this? I'm a ghoul! I didn't know about any of this stuff until a couple of months ago. When this guy just appeared and... Well, all of a sudden, BAM! Whoa, man! Vampires are real and right there in front of my eyes! Blew my goddamn mind! You said you're a ghoul? What's that? Well, the way it was explained to me, whenever a vampire lets a human drink some of their vampire blood, a human gains a little vampire power! Can heal up quick and that kind of stuff! Jeez, oh man! Then they're a ghoul and ooh, watch out! Um, who's the vampire that made you a ghoul? Oh man, I really wish I could tell you, but I don't think I'm supposed to. But it's really cool to be talking to you just, well, because I don't get a lot of chance to talk to vampires. Oh man, well, other than my master. So I thought I'd just say, you know, what's up, <laughs> you know? This guy's kind of obnoxious, but I guess in the endearing way, so, uh, like being a ghoul? It's awesome! Man, after that first date of vampire blood, it's like the best drug. Oh man, I'm telling you, it's like, well, it didn't mess me up. It just made me feel like I was better at everything. Felt like a god just sucking on that nasty dude's wrist. Man, if I had a dollar for every time I heard that one. So, what are you doing around here? Look, I probably shouldn't tell you this, but I want a secret mission from my master. Well, hey, <laughs> it's been great talking to you, man. But I better be going. Oh man, you know, important stuff to do. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone ever told you that you're an idiot? Well, let's see you around. I mean, we, we got a friend to go take care of and get pain meds for. Our ultimate enemy, the receptionist. But, I mean, Jack said that we're a big bad vampire, in his own words, so I'm sure we can sneak past her. Please, wait your turn and you'll be seen. Or we can't, because she's psychic. Now, there are actually a few ways to get past this receptionist. Please, you can attempt a persuasion check. Be seen. All right, go on back. Please, you can demon take them if you're a Malkavian. You, right, you, you can dominate them if you're a Venture. The doctor will get to you when he can. All right, go on back. Did you hear and if you attempt none of those things and try and go anyway, well, you're can. not going to have that of a time. You can't go back there. But I'm not going to be taking any of those approaches, mostly because most of them aren't available to me, so why don't we go back out? And, uh, I mean, sneaking 101, let's go around to the back of the building. Blood bank downstairs, well yeah, this sounds like my kind of place. And if you enter through the back, you can just lockpick this door open. This is definitely the way you're going to want to go in here if you're a Nosferatu. <laughs> um, so now we're in the medical clinic and we can kind of check the place out, so... Uh, let's check... I mean, start with number one. Who are you? Oh, 
What did you do? What did you do to me? <sighs> oh, crap. Yeah, that whole masquerade thing. Uh, I must be going now. Uh, bye, chick. Now, if you didn't understand that whole masquerade spiel that Jack told us about last time and tell her that you're a vampire, well, you're also not going to have a good time. Starting from room one, now we can move to room two over here. And it's completely empty. So, now let's move on to room three. What's behind door number three? I'm sorry, sir, but you're going to have to wait outside like everyone else. No exceptions. Fine. All right, he's one of those good-to-do doctors, and uh, I don't think we're going to get any pain meds for him. So, why not move on to room number four? And there's pill bottles here. But sadly, it's for more estrogen. I don't know what's the deal with this world just leaving estrogen lying around everywhere, but... Hmm, Dr. Malcolm St. Martin's office. Why don't you try and go in here? Well, I can't right now. It's lockpicking difficulty 4. Now, I could blood buff to get through here, but I'm actually going to show the far more, uh, interesting way to get through there, I suppose. So, if we go around to the back and go upstairs... There's a hole upstairs to this place, and we're going to start by lockpicking this door open. Luckily, this one's simple. Now, you need to watch out if you're going to try this, because there's going to be a guard walking around. Yeah, I already know all this. I'm pretty much psychic. Viago here is psychic. He just already knows that there's a guard. And you're going to need to wait for him, because if you're anywhere in his line of sight, he'll, uh... Well, it, it's not going to end up pretty for you. So, we need to wait. So he actually just walked straight past, that means that we can run, and uh, let's check out this room first, because it's the one that's closest to us. I mean, it looks like the break room here, and there's a note right here. Hey Jason, can you set Malcolm's password for me? He wants it set to Panacea. Well, I mean, I guess Malcolm's that Dr. Malcolm St. Martin that we saw earlier, so now uh, we know the password to his computer in his room. And is he still there? He is. Crap. I think he knows what we're here. This area is for and apparently he's psychic, you can see us through here, so, uh, alright, uh, I guess I'll just be leaving then. Or, I'll make him think that I'll leaving. I'll be leaving. Let's see if we can, if we can make it past and see more rooms now. And apparently he's also completely blind and didn't see it, just walk straight past him. I actually didn't know that you could even do that. Now, we got the maintenance room key. This is going to be your first step if you're looking to get the key to St. Martin's room, the, uh, I guess, non-lockpicking way. So now that we have the key, we can exit and actually go to the maintenance room. Oh, where is this guy? He is right there. So now we can run straight past him. He will not see you unless you're directly in his line of sight. And we can make it into here, which is the maintenance room. I know, yeah, I already know where the rooms are, but as I said, this is not my first field recording. This is not my first recording of this. And we can make it up here into the vents. And the route you're going to want to take through the vents, you can actually get to a few places using this, but you're going to want to go to the right, down this place. You're going to want to traverse your way through these amazing vents. And you'll find your way at this grate. And if we make it in here to this grate, we can see Malcolm's office key. Nice and conveniently. And we're led straight back here, which is, you know, awfully nice. So now we can make it into St. Martin's room. And in St. Martin's room, we have bottles of morphine, so I guess we can go and hand those to Mercurio. And we know that the password to his computer is Panacea, so why don't we try and open his email and see what sort of interesting things we can find tonight? Malcolm, are you free tonight? I thought you could swing by my apartment after your shift. You do still make house calls, don't you, doctor? I have something that needs to be checked out. Oh, okay. I think she's suspicious. Do I really have to ask twice? We don't have to do anything if you don't want, but I really do need some help studying for my anatomy test, please. That sounds awfully suspicious. Guess I'll see you around five. I'm really glad you finally decided to come over, and if you should want me to show my appreciation, you just have to ask. Oh, I think I know where this is going. 
on your way home. Malcolm, do you think you'll be able to get a day off next week? My mother's coming into town on Thursday. Okay, so this guy is apparently having an affair. Uh, well, why don't we go? Why don't we go tell him about that and see what he thinks about it? I told you I will get to you when I can. Please take a seat. Hmm. You, Malcolm, does your wife know about your affair? Get out of here! Can't you see I'm with a patient? Hmm. Guess you don't care if your wife finds out then. Are you trying to blackmail me? You don't know who my wife is. She wouldn't believe you. Now get out! Hmm, guess I'm gonna have to go and forward that email from Paige to Trina. Wait now. What do you want? 75 bucks. Deal. But I'm in the middle of something. I'll have to drop it off later. Now never speak to me about that again. Alright, put it in my mailbox. So we just extorted 75 bucks out of a doctor. <laughs> awesome. And that's basically all that we have to do here. So, uh... Well, we heard about that blood bank downstairs. It was on the door. And also it was apparently advertised right here. So why don't we go check that out? I mean, as a vampire, that's of utmost interest to us. The doors in this game are just... They're, they're source engine doors. I'll give them that. You next up for the needle? Hmm? Your donation could save a life, you know. Oh, but isn't it a little late for altruism? I don't think you're here to give blood at all. I don't buy it, Jack. I bet you're here to take blood. Am I right? Uh, uh I, I don't know what you're talking about. I remember that whole masquerade thing that Jack told me about. They all come in here with that same nonchalant look. With that, who, me, stare? As if they were so clever. Do you think you're the first vampire to try and come in here to buy blood? Honestly. Damn it, he's a smart one. Uh, yeah, I'll buy some blood. How much? If you have to ask. Show me. So here, uh, with our good buddy, who actually I don't think he's been named yet, uh, you can buy blood packs for $99. Those are really expensive, considering we only have $100 right now. You can also buy blue blood packs. They're 198 Of course, you don't really need them, unless you're a venture. So, uh... I mean, that's good to know. Oh, Employee of the Month, Vandal. Alright, so now... Okay, good thing. I didn't accidentally spoil another character's name. So that's good old Vandal running the blood bank down here. So that's kind of everything that's in here for the medical clinic. So why don't we go back to our good buddy Mercurio and uh, and give him that morphine that we found. Alright, buddy. The doctor is in. I got, I got your meds for you. Oh, didn't he die already? Oh, all right. Well, I brought you some morphine. Hold still. Oh, oh, holy Christ! I needed that. All right, you're welcome. I'll come back when I have that astrolite. All right, goodbye. Now, uh, that's that's our first. Well, that's our first side quest completed. That's our first like actual quest complete. One that actually took like a modicum of effort, unlike Wherefore Arthur and Mercurio. So I think that's going to be all for this episode. We we helped out our buddy Mercurio. We know what our, our objective now is. And we checked out the medical clinic. So thank you all for watching. In the next episode, we'll take care of getting that astrolite back from Mercurio. Thank you all for watching, and peace out.